This is the JVC TM-290ZE Pro Monitor. It is a CRT monitor, of course. The 29, as the name suggests, is in reference to the size of the tube. It's 29 inches. It's a curved screen. I think it was made in 1996. I have an electronic service manual for it, and that is dated 1996. The monitor weighs 41.7 kilos. Right now I've got a PlayStation 1 running on it in RGB. It takes RGB, luckily. So I'll take the camera off the tripod and we'll go around it a bit. So there you go, you've got your company badge there and color video monitor, model number. Down here you've got a power switch, push in and out power switch. Up here it's probably the infrared remote control sensor and an indicator that the power is on, active. That turns red when the monitor is switched off. Here is the matching remote. We'll get into that a bit more shortly. And I may actually disconnect the cables and things so we can have a better look at the inputs. As you can see, there are inputs there on the side, which is a little bit unusual. I've got speakers hooked up there, Sony speakers. There's one there and the other over the other side there. Uh, the monitor does not have any inbuilt speakers at all. It has an amplifier. And that's working fine with those Sony monitor speakers. Okay, now we can have a better look at the connections here on the side. Up the top, you've got your controls. So if you are missing the remote, I would say you would be right with those buttons up there. Power on and off. Another LED to indicate if the monitor's on. External control, so if you've got a remote, a cabled remote device, you can plug it in there and control the monitor. Input A is composite in via the BNC, and an output, along with sound as well, and termination there of 75 ohms. Input B is the same scenario again, except that we have an S video. I would say that that would be the one and only S video input and you can select there we'll test it later and go back up to the top now there's one there that's labeled RGB YS and from what I've read in the manual that there is an ability somehow to superimpose either the RGB onto composite video input or composite video onto the RGB input it's one or the other but I'm not totally sure on how it works so I can't comment any further than that you will see below that is the input for RGB and component as well. So the monitor will display component video and RGB, which is quite handy. Red, green and blue inputs. And then there's the sync. And there are inputs for the sound for that RGB line there. As you can see, it's got the white line joining them together. Then you have the speaker connection points for speaker wires, as I, I just did with those Sony speakers. And the power input there is the... IEC PC style one, AC 230 volts, so I would say that it doesn't take 110. So that's all on the side here. Uh, the monitor may not be the best for rotating in that case. If it may, it may balance on this edge, but it's not like the cube form of the PVMs. And if you do rotate it onto this side that we're looking at right now, the cables will be probably obstructed, so perhaps not the best for rotating. On the back, there are no further inputs. It's all on the side there. And again, there's the model, wattage consumption, and made in Japan, we like that. Big JVC logo. Uh, on the other side, it's blank. Some carry recesses there. Not particularly useful in those spots, I find. And also a little caution label here for the way screws are mounted. They don't want you to put the screws in the wrong places or something like that. I haven't seen any warning on putting screws in things like that. <laughs> we'll open it up and have a look inside. One more thing to point out is too that there are some holes in the back there. It might be done. Uh, they're lighting up. They're not actually screw holes for screws that hold the monitor together. I think they would probably be... Uh, they got threads inside them. They would be for probably mounting speakers onto the side. I don't know what the matching speakers look like. I don't have those. Okay, now that the back's off, the monitor is fairly dusty inside. 
the yoke is made in Japan and the tube itself is actually a Panasonic M68 68 centimeters in size M for monitor grade uh, is there a made in Japan on the tube not on that particular sticker I would think it would be but I cannot confirm that it is monitor grade so I'd say it would be oh yeah you got some metal reinforcing around there the framework that it's that it's set on that'll keep it a bit stronger and there's your chassis in a big U shape big transformer on there I'm not too big but then you got a big yeah, the flybacks looks like nearly it's got two flybacks in one there it's quite a quite a tall sort of a beast all dusted up screen and focus JVC branded flyback as well and board in there sub board neck board there all right oh we've got a Sony chip on the board there there we go, there's the inside again, there's no speakers by the look of it, and there's some, there are those threaded holes I was talking about before where you probably screw on the, uh, the speakers perhaps, and there's another pair on the bottom, and again on the other side there are two pairs of threaded holes there. Uh, it was fairly quite easy to take that back off. There was only four screws, one in each corner, one in the, each corner for the main backing, and then three on the side here you can see the holes where the three went so it's quite an easy cover to take off this chassis dropped dropped down a bit so hopefully it's not too hard to get back on we'll have a look at the monitor in action now i want to show you the on-screen display so when we press menu on the remote that's what comes up if we go into picture adjust we've got contrast brightness aspect ratio and reset and in the function select, we have color temperature screensaver. Oh, I don't know what the screensaver actually looks like, whether it's um, a blue screen or what. Uh, you can choose whether the sync is external or internal. So if you're running RGB, you'd have it internal. If you're running component, you'd have it external. And then we have another selection there too to go between RGB and component. I want to go back to... Um, RGB. Now, to get into the service menu, you press and hold menu and then press enter. It's a little, little bit tricky, but there we go. So here we have some more in-depth things, you know, this is what we want. So horizontal position, vertical position and adjustments for the sizes as well. I've adjusted them already off their default values of zero. The PlayStation 1, white balance, color system, that's all on auto, and a few other things there. To get out of it, you just press menu, and then you're back into the regular menu. So the service menu is not too hard to get into. Uh, I will link the a link to the PDF for the service menu for the monitor. Uh, I've got the pattern generator hooked up to the monitor, and I'll do that instead of consoles because it's so much quicker for me to make a video doing it this way. Um, I still will show some console stuff, but not as much. So that's uh, a PAL signal, a straight PAL signal displaying on the monitor. And you'll see in the left column, the white column, that there is a splotch of like aqua or blue there. I think that the monitor may have had a hit at some stage in its life and may have um, shifted damage the shadow mask inside the tube. I've degaussed it a few times with a wand and done it manually by the monitor's own degaussing circuit and I can't remove that splotch. So I'm just going to say that it has had a whack, which is quite the shame because it's a very rare specimen. Anyhow, that's, um, that image is very bright. This is PAL composite, right? So all these signals now are composite. Uh, I don't think the monitor's had much use because it's uh, it's very bright, which is good. It's uh, it's very vibrant. Uh, I actually will turn down the brightness a little bit and the contrast as well because it's it's actually too strong on the default value for my liking. You have to do that for each input. So that's PAL, and then this is PAL M, 
So it's not compatible with Pal M because it should be all coloured if it was, unless it's faulty, but I'll say it's just not compatible with Pal M. Same deal with Pal N. Pal 60, so it's a 60 hertz refresh rate. That's fine with that, as you'd expect. There's C cam. And then we've hit VGA, which is not going to do that, it's certainly not through composite. But I'll go back to NTSC stuff, or I'll go to the NTSC signals. Okay, so the monitor knows what it's receiving too. NTSC 4.43, NTSC J, this one's NTSC J, NTSC M, and that's it. That's as far as it goes for composite uh, testing there. We can do a convergence there as well. It's looking pretty good. Little bit, little bit bent on the bottom there, a little bit, but pretty much as you'd expect. And again, you can see that splotchiness over there showing up a bit aquary in colour. You can see it bending up there at the bottom a little bit, a little bit misconverged up there in that corner. Probably par for the course though, I would say. There's that splotchiness again on the left. Go back to the colour bars. Right, I will go to this video now, which is input two. It's already set up, so we'll go through those again quickly. Uh, NTSC M, NTSC J, NTSC 4.43, good. PAL, yes. PAL M, PAL N, no. PAL 60, yes. C cam. So, incompatible with some of the more or less common PAL signals, but. You've got PAL and NTSC on S video working fine. Let's go over to something else. Let's go to RGB or component at least. So now the monitor is running component. Very bright again. That's 576i at 50 hertz. 576p progressive does not support it, not surprising. 480i at 60 hertz, yes. 480p at 60 hertz, no. Again, not surprising. 720p, monitor squealing a bit. 720p at 50 hertz. Oh, some strange resolutions in the tester here. 1080i, no. 1080p, no. Might get it off those. Don't know if they can put the monitor or not, but you get the point. Right, oh. Uh, uh, I'll just see if the monitor, if I can get the pattern generator to do RGB as well. So the monitor now is still running from the pattern generator in RGB 576i and 480i. It does look like it's got some tweeting going on up there with those lines, a bit of curl over there or something on top. But you saw Castlevania Chronicles on the PlayStation 1 before. That would be running at 240p. So we know it can also handle uh, that, of course, in RGB. Now we'll do a light gun test with the NES. So finally, the NES is hooked up. And this is via RGB. It's been modified to display way output RGB. It's a PAL NES, PAL Duck Hunt. This should work without any trouble. So we are on to a winner. Yeah. Yep, no problem at all. Gun works fine. The JVC does pretty much everything that it sets out to do. It's compatible with all of those signals that I showed, that's expected. It's a bonus that it can show a component as well. Its nearest competitors would be the Sony PVM 9050 range and NEC's XM multi-sync monitors. This would be closer to the Sony in the sense that it can do component video but it doesn't have the multi-syncing ability that the NEC does on the basic XM models. 
Uh, the issue on the left side of the screen, the splotchiness, the purity imperfection. I checked in the back of the TV. The convergence rings are still set at factory. They haven't been changed with. The glue still intact and the yoke's quite firm to the touch so perhaps a yoke adjustment might help but hard to say. I would say it's probably had some damage done to it. There's also a bit of a purity issue just over here as well but that's pretty minor. Anyhow, that's pretty much it for the video. Um, thank you again for watching. There's still more to come and uh, I'll see you next time.